Hi, I'm Jason and I'm one half of Two World Nomad and Lisa is the other half. Say hello, Lisa. Hello. Uh, this is just a little video blog about the modifications we've done to Lisa's new bike. Just a little bit of history about where we've been so far. So we've been on the road three years, we've done 50,000 miles. We originally started from the UK. We travelled by container ship all the way down to Uruguay. From Uruguay we got off the boat and we rode all the way to the bottom of South America, to the bottom part of Argentina. We took a side trip across to Antarctica. We travelled back to Argentina and then we meandered all the way up through South America Chile, Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, all the way through Central America, Mexico, United States, Canada, and Alaska. We arrived in Prudhoe Bay last year, which is the basically it's the northernmost road. So it's the, it's, the, it's the furthest you can travel by road in Alaska. So we got to the very top. We turned around, came back down again, and now we are in Alberta for the winter. So we thought it would be a great idea to put this little video together just to explain the modifications that we've done to Lisa's new bike, which is a Suzuki DR650. So this is Lisa's uh, Suzuki DR650. We've not actually really ridden this yet. Um, the old bike, which was the BMW F650GS, that was the bike that Lisa did 50,000 miles on. Um, there was nothing wrong with it, it was just a bit heavy for his class. And this bike came along at the right price, and um, so we sold the old bike, and now we've got this one which is a lot lighter, and it's gonna be better for off-road riding, because Lisa, what are you? Uh, eight stone five? What's that? <laughs> Tell the whole world. You're about eight stone five, aren't you? Yeah. So, so for people who don't know what stones are, um, it's so it's 14 pounds in stone, so I'll let you work out that. that uh, 115, 115 pounds, right? Okay, so so this bike's a lot lighter than the old bike. Um, it's a, would you say it's a little bit taller? Yes, remarkably taller, right? Okay, but it, because it's a little bit lighter, then that's the trade off. Um, it's got better ground clearance than the old bike, um, but anyway, so. This is the DR650. This is actually a standard, apart from a few bits that bits are on, this is really what the bike used to look like. Um, the exhaust has been changed on this one and the handlebars are different. Um, but apart from that, this is pretty much a standard DR650. This has been modified a bit. Um, some of it is really, I feel, essential. Other bits aren't so. Um, but we'll start at the front. So. Starting at the front. So the mudguard is not a standard mudguard or a fender. Um, I just wanted something that looked a little bit more modern. There's nothing wrong with the original um, fender. It's just that this one seems a little bit more stylish and it wasn't particularly expensive. So underneath the fender bag, which carries our inner tube for this bike, is, I don't know whether you can see, there's a little piece of metal here that actually gives strength to the mudguard so um, so you can carry this bag, carry the weight. Next is the, I've got these, they're called seal skins, they're actually just like neoprene socks, they just protect the fork tubes from stone chips and they save the uh, fork seals. So we did find on the old bike that um, we were getting a lot of stone chips on the uh, on the tubes and I think that was causing premature wear on the fork seal. So on this bike we've put these neoprene socks on. Next is the uh, brake hose. I've changed this to a uh, metal braided hose which is going to give the brake more power and going to make it more responsive. This bike doesn't normally come with a screen. I added an aftermarket screen and it does a surprisingly good job of keeping the wind off you considering how small it is. I've got smaller indicators. Um, didn't like the old ones. 
thought they were a bit large and a bit outdated and these weren't particularly expensive so we changed those. Hand guards definitely are a must to protect the, uh, the clutch lever and the brake lever. So I do recommend some good hand guards. These actually work pretty well, they're nice and big so they deflect uh, a lot of the wind off, off your hands. So this is Lisa's little modification, a bicycle belt. What's that for? Oh, you know, it's a friendly way to say hello to your passing cyclists. And in my experience, um, it's, it's kind of the last thing they expect to hear. It's kind of nice. Okay. Next mod we did was we changed the original mirrors. These are double tape mirrors and you can move them in different positions. Also, if the bike does go over, they're less likely to break. Next thing is the console. The console is a VaporTech digital console. I changed this out because I didn't want the old analog um, display. This one also has a rev counter on it, temperature sensor on it. Um, and I felt it was pretty accurate when it came to recording the speed. So I, I quite like this and it wasn't particularly expensive either. Unfortunately, I can't get to the key now because the key's underneath, so... <laughs> well, rather, I can't get to the key. Not with them. So, so with, with, the, with, the, with the console being where it is, I'm going to have to do something by changing out the ignition barrel and maybe putting it somewhere here. That'd be really helpful, thanks, to get to the key. Yeah, okay. Underneath is the two inch risers. They give you a better, in my opinion, a better riding position, brings the handlebars a little bit higher. The handlebar has been changed to a, a fatter, stronger bar. So the tank, the tank's not a standard tank, this is a 17 litre service tank. I don't know whether you can see, but <laughs> the, you can see the level of the, of the gas here, handy. Uh, which is handy. So, function over design in this case. I, I prefer a black tank, but this makes more sense. I prefer the clear one. Okay, well, good. So the seat has been modified. This is the original seat, but it's been, uh, it's had extra foam added to it and it's been recovered. It's super comfy, Who nice made, and wide. Who made that? It was made by a woman called Andrea in Calgary. I can't tell you any more than that. No. So another essential is the belly pan. This came with the bike. Also these uh, covers which are made out of I believe stainless steel. They protect not just this side but there's one on the other side as well. This came with the bike. This is a basically it's a warp 9 uh, gear shifter with a um, collapsible toe piece. I don't know whether you need it, it's, I suppose it's nice to have, but it's not essential in my opinion. Um, the foot pegs, they're great, they're nice and wide, nice and grippy, these are actually um, lowered um, foot pegs, which makes the riding position a lot better. The bike came with an aftermarket shock, it's a cogent dynamic shock, it's quite a basic one, but it's hopefully better than the original. In the front, which I forgot to mention, the forks have got progressive springs in, so that's still stiffened up the front end a little bit. What we did do to the shock was we put in some lowering links, which brought the seat down a little bit. We also lowered the forks a little bit by one inch, for, so Lisa could actually get her feet on the ground. So this bike actually has been lowered a little bit. So this has been changed, the back of the bike, this tailpiece, I didn't like the original tailpiece, I thought it was particularly ugly, it wasn't a lot of cash, so I changed this out, got rid of quite a bit of weight as well, it's got a little LED light at the back, on top is the rack that I modified, originally it was a lot higher, I cut it down, re-welded it to the uh, grab rails, painted it black, uh, what are these Lee? Oh, I'm just accessorising there with my two guardian bells, which apparently ward away the
So on this side, what I've changed is I've rejetted the carburetor and I've also opened up the airbox. Airbox? Airbox. And I've changed out the can at the back, which has allowed it to breathe better. So hopefully we're going to get a little bit more power and we're not going to sacrifice too much on the fuel consumption. This tank holds 17 litres, like I say, which gives us a range of about 300 miles or 500 k. So I'm pretty happy with that. We've decided to stick with the original soft bags. We found these really good. We prefer them to the hard boxes. They're a little bit more forgiving in a crash. These particular ones are Adventure Spec Magadan 2s. On the front, we've not really tried these out yet, but I really like the concept of having bags up front. It transfers some of the weight to the front, which I like. Also, it's extra storage, so things like food or things that you need straight away, maybe, I don't know, a jacket or um, a, a second pair of gloves we can put in the front here. Nothing that's gonna break, of course. And also, we like the fact that they protect your legs against the weather. So this is the added bonus to this, for these bags is that they give you a certain amount of weather protection. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the end of our little tour around Lisa's bike. If you'd like to follow us, you can follow us on www.twoworldnomad.com. Until next time, see you later.